thank you very much for inviting me here. Um, as an Englishman abroad, uh, you're never quite sure of the reception you're going to get uh, nowadays. Um, <laughs> get out. Well, that's what we're doing, I think. <laughs> um, but uh, since you guys and my guys have been on the same side since the Treaty of Windsor in 1386, I hope uh, we'll find a way to remain friends. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is apologise about my presentation. You've seen some amazing looking presentations this morning. When the good Lord created me, he did, uh, he gave me a viz bypass. So um, I, I asked at the keynote at, at, at a big uh, thing and I did, I did it in markup, which uh, didn't really work. Uh, so you have got slides today, um, but uh, uh, they're not very really good, so I'm sorry about that. So when we talk about industrialization, I think perhaps I have, um, perhaps I've uh, misled somebody, right? Because you thought Jaguar Land Rover, Jaguar Land Rover is the motor car company I work for. We make uh, Range Rovers, I guess, is our best known vehicle. Um, and so people thought, maybe thought industrialization was, was about, about making cars. But I, I, I started off as principal engineer at Betfair and then I, uh, Ran the data science business at a bank called Barclays, and now I run the analytics business there. And it's been on my mind for a long time this idea of data science and how data science grows up, right? Because we're kind of like, like a cottage industry right now. <laughs> Back in, I don't know, before the industrial, uh, industrial Revolution, if you wanted to spin yarn, if you wanted to get wool material to make clothes, you kind of sheared a sheep and then you sent the sheep to a whole load of probably women sitting in cottages and while their husband was farming the farm, they'd be spinning the yarn, right? And then they'd package it up and send it back to the factory. That was how stuff was done. And it was only a long time through the Industrial Revolution that they really worked out how to make factories work, how to make this sustainable, productionize this work, right? So that we're not just creating individual little packets of value, but we're creating a machine that can create value long term, right? It business of data science rather than a series of data science projects, right? How do you create a business of data science? How do we become a profession of data scientists rather than just a bunch of people, I was going to say guys, um, a bunch of people doing data science, creating things of value, right, but not creating a business which, which, which has a way of creating value ongoing, sustaining that. How do we industrialize what we do? Now this really matters, right? Because while the big noise of data science and AI and all that are in your Googles and your Amazons and, and your Facebooks and all of that kind of stuff, they're revolutionizing that part of the world. And they're really good at that because they're businesses that have been designed for that from the start. Jeff Bezos comes out and he goes, my business is going to be about data, we can talk about that in a second. But how do, how do we think about applying Google technology to a 300-year-old institution, 326-year-old in terms of Barclays, with just over 100 years old in terms of Jeff Right? How do you take Google technology, space age technology, and apply it in a sustainable way to a business that was never meant for that, both in terms of our operations and in terms of our people and the way we think and all that other stuff, right? How do we industrialize? That's what I mean by industrialization here. And I think it really matters to us because 95% of the world is not Amazon, is not Google, is not Baidu, is not all of that. It's Jaguar Land Rover, a kind of dirty metal bashing company in the British Midlands, right? That's what it's all about. And when you look at us in Jaguar, we've got a thousand systems, right? Not a single, not even a data warehouse, right? All these things, how do we think about that? How do we as data scientists become a business? No, this is the challenge. So I've tried all of them. Okay, so this comes out of a piece of work I did the RSS. The RSS is an old uh, institution based in London um, uh, about statistics, right? And so we are in some sense statisticians because we're getting patterns out of data. Um, and the RSS is a bunch of statisticians 
who've been scratching their heads about this thing called data science, because just a mile down the road in Shoreditch were a whole load of cool companies doing cool stuff that had absolutely nothing to do with the institution of statistics, as you can see in big pharma companies that have huge, great statistical, uh, statistical businesses. And so the question for them was, can we jump on the data science bandwagon? The, 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 the question for me was, can we start thinking about how statistics has become institutionalized and in some sense put in strength the structures and the questions around it? So we did, a, I knocked out a paper uh, that was kind of really founded, I didn't found, the paper founded, uh, the data science section at the RSS. And it was really about sort of 12 questions we need to ask, start asking ourselves. Now, I'm going to put the 12, oh God, that was like a punchline, you've seen it already. Um, <laughs> these are the 12 questions, I'm not going to kind of go through them one by one. There is a paper, I'd love you to read it, I'd love you to get involved in the debate because the RSS has done a number of uh, kind of road shows throughout the UK, I'm sure you can persuade them to come out here if, uh, if it was sunny. Um, and, uh, but they've been quite interesting talking it through and, and I think one of the really interesting things is the, the relatively low level of the debate that we're currently having as data scientists about these questions, right? So you can download the paper, it's hopefully relatively easy to read, uh, but I just want to kind of go through a few things and then focus on one as we went through, because I've got uh, 13 minutes 37, so we've kind of got a bit of time to do this. So the first question that always comes up in these kind of debates is what makes a data scientist, what is a data scientist? And if I go into another meeting about what makes a good data scientist, I'll probably shoot myself, because it's completely the point. What is data scientist? What we've discovered very early on in data science is that the data science is full of people trying to put up walls, right? This is a wall. This side of the wall, you're a data scientist. This side, you're not really a data scientist. And the funny thing about these walls in data science is that whoever you ask, they're on the right side of the wall. <laughs> Ask a computer scientist, you'll say, yeah, it's all about production data and, um, you know, uh, proper um, software development practices, that's a data scientist, right? Ask a statistician, they'll go, well, if you've got a statistician, he's not a data scientist, right? Yeah. I'll ask, you know, but you ask these guys in Shoreditch, you know, Shoreditch is a part of London where there's a lot of staff, right? If you ask these guys in Shoreditch, they don't care about any of that, and they're off web scraping and doing all these things we're told we can't do. All that stuff, <laughs> Right? Everyone draws a line. So we just, let's get away from this, right? Let's just think about what great data science looks like. And I won't go into that, but I, I want to plant that in your head, that when you're thinking about data science, this is an integrative technology, right? We're all data scientists somehow, and drawing up lines where it's almost like the old kind of unionization or kind of master craftsman thing. You're in, you're in the club, you're not in the club. It's just we did, however, got really interested in what a good data science workflow looks like. So how do we do data science? Because we have a peculiar challenge if you're in business or government in data science. This is a peculiar challenge. Because we are, on one hand, exploring. Right? We're finding out new things. We don't know what we're going to find. Right? Yet, on the other hand, we're required to produce production quality stuff that will go into production right now. And yet, the way you do data science, the way you do science, the way you do R&D, is quite a different way of thinking and behaving to the way that you might do productionization. In the past, you'd have an R&D department, they'd do their R&D, you'd do your R&D and you'd decide how you're gonna build a Range Rover, and then you send it to, to the factory and they kind of build their Range Rover. I got a plug for my product in there, if you like that. It's kind of subtle. Now, that can't work with data science because it's an iterative thing, it's a feedback thing, right? If you're Amazon, you're getting feedback millions of times a second or something, right, on your product. You couldn't get feedback a million times a second on your Range Rover, right? You can't build your Range Rover, throw it into production. Yet these companies we're thinking about are not set up to do this kind of feedback loop, this exploratory loop. How do we explore and at the same time build production code? Because that's the promise that we've given. Everyone says, Amazon can do this. Why don't you, I need you to do that in Jaguar Land Rover. We've kind of promised the world we can. How do we explore and go production? It doesn't work when you want it to do it. Right? 
Can you pick it? Oh, now it's gone forward. I have no idea. How to do it. Okay, we'll probably click back again. Okay. Um, lots of sort of interesting questions, right, around how do you create a data science function, right? I think we as a, we as a, uh, I'm going to put it down here just in case. Uh, we as a business are not very good at this, right? How we think about, most, most, if you go and ask a data, if you ask, there are lots of people with opinions out here, not very many people have done it very, very well. If you ask a consultancy, they'll tell you what you really want is some kind of outsourced model where we do the business, we do it all in India, right? If you ask a data scientist, they'll say, yeah, you've got to build a team of data scientists. The models that people use for building data science, the kind, if you ask an NLP guy what kind, of, uh, what kind of things you should do in your data science business, they'll, they'll always tell you NLP is the answer, right? Um, it, we don't really have a very good idea, and so, so executives don't have a very good idea about what we can be doing with this technology, how you set up a, uh, how you set up a function, and, and crucially, where you sit that function within your organisation. So again, I'm talking to a bunch of data scientists, you probably like doing data science, you probably think this is the most boring question in the world, but where you sit within your organisation will completely, will, will almost completely de uh, determine whether you have any impact or not. And depending upon which organization you fit in, right, that will determine where you should sit. Okay, so here's, the clear, here's, here's, a, here's a big dilemma. Do you, as a data science team, want to be sat in a center of excellence? Right? With a bunch of other data scientists in a room with data scientists, you can talk data science, you can do really cool data science, you can, you can do, you know, you've got a critical mass of thinking there, you produce really cool stuff, but you're not embedded in your organization whatsoever, so whatever you produce may actually not fit what's needed. You may not have the understanding of your business to make what, to fit what's needed. Or do you embed your data scientists within the organization, one or two people in lots of different places, where they get to know about the marketing department, the sales department, and the challenges in production, or electric vehicles, or whatever, but they don't have the critical mass of data scientists to really think good thoughts. This is a critical dilemma for your organization. Another way of thinking about it, very often you'll find that question is, should they be within technology, right? If you're in technology, it's brilliant, right? Because you can get all the tech you want, and you can get things into production, and uh, you've got Git, right? And you, you know, you've got continuous integration, it's fantastic, right? But you can't get the attention of someone in the business who sits there going, yeah, but it looks really good, but what do I use it for? Alternatively, and I've done both of these by the way, you can be sat within the business, really understanding the product and, and getting things out that people need, but getting the attention of the IT guy who works in six month windows of like, the, you know, the, when things get deployed and everything has to be a five million pound enterprise level, huge budget, hundreds of people all based in different parts of the world thing because otherwise it doesn't really get on their Gantt chart. Right? <laughs> Which one do you want to be? It's hard, right? We need to be thinking about these questions because otherwise you'll be doing cool data science that no one cares about. Yeah? Don't know what the answer is. But there is an answer, we're just finding it. Probably some kind of federated model, that's what we're doing at Jaguar. Maybe talk to people about that later. Anyway, questions you've got to be involved in because they affect you. So read my paper. Excellent. Okay, I've got six more minutes. Right. So one of the things that I've really been thinking a lot about, and here's the time for the dinosaur, is uh, what do executives and managers need to learn about data science, right? <laughs> what do chief executives and managers need to know about data science? So the, we recognize the world is changing, and in particular, the world of the executive is changing. Why is that? So in slow-moving industries, almost all of them, the kind of, the way you, you, you join a business, you spend your first five or ten years doing really cool stuff, 
becoming master of your trade, you know, really making a difference to analytics, and slowly, to, or analytics in this case, slowly as time goes on, you manage more and more people, and you realise that what matters is not any longer, it's not so how good you are at doing stuff, you're not sat at the desk, you're not typing stuff, you're managing people, you're organising stuff, and gradually over time, particularly in big corporations, and most of the world is, you know, but this can use data science, is big corporations. You're, what, what matters is whether you deliver something on time. Massive matter what you deliver. You've just got to deliver something on time because you can measure whether someone delivers something on time or not. And the world is obsessed by measuring stuff. So you may deliver something on time. And you end up with the people at the top of businesses not really ever having to engage with anything that hard, anything that technical, hard technical. Well, that's going to be a problem, right? Because we kind of, the reason the dinosaur's there, I often think, uh, apologies to anyone out there who is a chief executive, that um, chief executives are increasingly becoming a bit like comedy dinosaurs. <laughs> that's the one out of Toy Story, I think. Why is that? Well, <coughs> we had a, a big important guy at Barclays, a couple of them, who kept on going around the business going, we're not a bank. We're not a bank anymore, no one's a bank anymore. We, wait for it, we're a tech company with a balance sheet. And he's sort of right and he's sort of wrong. I mean, he's sort of wrong in that if I put him in a room with Zuckerberg, I just can't imagine they'd have a conversation. But he's sort of right because what's happening is that what used to be back office cost center that they think of as IT, that's us by the way, right? Stop, stop being a cost center that you can kind of ignore because it's a cost and you've got to pay it, you've got to do it, you've got to do it, start to become a revenue generator. What is Amazon? Amazon is its recommendation tool in some sense. Even its fulfillment is really all about tech and about IT. Even fulfillment, just getting stuff from one place, putting it in another, is about tech. So, when, things, when you start, if I'm running a business and suddenly the thing that is determining the revenue of my business and the profits of my shareholders is tech, I've got to learn about tech. Right? And yet, most of these guys are facing the permeant extinction of not really knowing about tech because kind of all that matters is delivering on your Gantt chart. You need to help these guys. Right? I think the permanent extinction will come over time anyway, so just make it easier. <laughs> what do they need to understand? Right? That's a big question. Right? They don't need to understand data science. But they kind of do because they're going to have to employ a data scientist. How do they know if that data scientist is doing the right thing? What we do is actually pretty subtle sometimes. Right? Astonishing. We're quite subtle, right? And often the implications of what we do is quite subtle. You can, I'm sure you've had the same sort of thing. You, you do something amazing, right? So we did something amazing the other day. We, we kind of got two sets of data and put them together and went, you can now understand profitability on parts. And I had someone in the, in the room, senior guy, going, yeah, but what am I going to use it for? Do what? They've got to be encouraged to re-engage with what they previously thought of was boring off technical stuff. They didn't need to know about it, it was just a 50 million pound budget that they just had to spend. And some guy would spend it in some offshore thing and they didn't need to engage. They need to engage, they need to have the imagination. You need to be engaging with them to encourage them to have the imagination. Right? I said to the guy in the meeting, I said, mate, you are in trouble if you want the commercial imagination of this company to be determined by a bunch of nerds typing up computers, right? We get you your data, but you've got to engage with us in working out what to do with it. Because if, if the limits of the imagination is me and my team, we'll do some cool stuff, but it won't have nearly the effect you should. Error is a really, really important thing to help your executives to understand, right? When you say, what was it, 97% error we talked about in, 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 in image recognition, right? The executive will hear 3%, well, 97% uh, precision. The executive will hear 3% error, right? It's a massive, massive problem for us because they don't get the fact that that might even be better than the human being. Because they don't get the fact that the human being, if only the human being worked a bit harder, 
they make no errors, right? <laughs> You've got to help them understand that precision and recall it and what errors are. And I've got one second left. Bullshit filter. I'll give 10 seconds on this, right? Almost, it is easier to get into your chief executive's office if you're from outside the company than if you're a nerd from inside the company, right? You've got to find a way of changing that, right? But everything they know about AI comes from McKinsey and Accenture and a bunch of vendors who haven't even built their product yet, right? And a bunch of guys telling them that they know what they know what's what, right? You've got to help them give them a bullshit filter. A book BS, our American, sorry, call me. BS filter. Our American, our American friends are much more sensitive on these things. Um, be careful with that because unless, unless chief executives can start controlling their agenda, you will find it very hard to make an impact. Anyway, if, if this thing will work, there's no more to be said, so you can come up here. Uh, if this thing works, it'll give you the, the GitHub where we've got this document. Please get involved in this conversation. Keep, and, keep, uh, keep, keep this line on, keep this line on. Because actually you've just, uh, you've just set the tone for uh, oh, today's debate. It's changed. <laughs> <laughs> Backwards eventually? Well, whatever. You've just, uh, you've just set the tone for uh, this afternoon's debate. We're going to have a, a, a very uh, notorious set of CEOs. Uh, and we're going to be we're going to be inviting you to come on stage and challenge them. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll get my team. And we're going to have the whole crowd, you know, yelling together, bullshit, bullshit, <laughs> bullshit. BS, BS, BS. 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 Thank you.